This is video 2 covering chapter 6 of your computer systems text. We'll cover some concepts of locality from section 2 of chapter 6 in this video. We'll just go over some definitions and then look at some code samples to take a look at locality in action. The principle of locality states that programs tend to use data and instructions with addresses near or equal to those they've used recently. We break this up into two concepts, temporal locality, which means that recently referenced items are likely to be referenced again in the near future, and spatial locality, which means that items with nearby addresses tend to be referenced close together in time. A great example of these concepts in action is the summing of the contents of an array. In this snippet of code, we just loop through the indices of array A and add the contents of each index to the variable called sum. The elements of an array are stored sequentially in memory, so as we loop through, each element we reference is right next to the last element we referenced. This is an example of good spatial locality. Also, in each iteration, we reference the variable sum. Remember that temporal locality means that a recently referenced item is likely to be referenced again in the near future, and the referencing of sum in each iteration is a good example of this. We also see spatial and temporal locality in the referencing of the instructions involved. Since we're looping, we reference the instructions involved in sequence, and each instruction used is referenced repeatedly as we loop. Now let's take a moment to talk about how C allocates memories for arrays and what stride one reference pattern mentioned in the last slide means. When you declare an array, the memory is allocated in order of index. So if you declare an array of type int with a size of three, the array will be stored in memory as three ints in a row. The first for index zero, the second for index one, the third for index two. Let's also look at declaring a multi-dimensional array. If we declare a two-dimensional array, we will find that the elements will be stored in this way. We can use this to determine how well a program utilizes spatial and temporal locality. Also on the last side, we saw a reference to something called a stride one reference pattern. A stride one reference pattern refers to a function that visits each element of a vector in memory sequentially. A stride k reference pattern, on the other hand, refers to a function that visits every kth element of a vector in memory. Stride 1 reference patterns are an important source of spatial locality in programs, and in general, as stride increases, spatial locality decreases. So, given what we learned in the last slide, can we determine whether the code shown here displays good locality? The answer is yes. We can see that the nested loops will iterate through the multidimensional array in the order in which the values are stored in memory. First, the program will visit A00, then A01, etc. This, again, is the same order in which they're stored in memory, so we have a stride 1 reference pattern, giving us good spatial locality with respect to A. Also notice, even though this is not the question asked here, that we also reference the variable sum in each iteration of the loops, so we also have a good temporal locality with respect to the variable called sum. How about this function? As you can see, the order of the loops has been reversed. Because of this, we're no longer using a stride one reference pattern. In this case, we visit the arrays uh, elements in this order. A00, so far so good. Then A10, A20, A01, A11, A21, etc. This ends up being a stride n reference pattern. So we're skipping around the vector in memory and referencing elements that are a distance of n apart rather than referencing them in order. This does not give us a good spatial locality with respect to A like the function in the last slide did. Now for a little exercise. Take a look at this function. Think about how you would permute the loop so that the function scans the 3D array with a stride 1 reference pattern. You can email me with questions you may have while thinking about this problem, but try to come up with the answer on your own. So go ahead and pause this slide here, maybe write down this code, and think about how would we change it to give ourselves a stride one reference pattern and good locality with respect to array A. So let's recap a few things from uh, this video and the last. Fast storage technologies cost more for less capacity and more power consumption. The gap between CPU and main memory speed is widening. Programs with good locality tend to run faster than those with poor locality. So the good news is that these properties lead us to an approach for organizing memory and storage systems, when we call that the memory hierarchy. And that's it for this video. 
In our next video, we'll start talking specifically about the memory hierarchy itself.